Um, all right, so we're going to look at our last uh, application uh, in this section, which is finding the volume of a solid of revolution. So what you want to do, what we're doing in this section is you take a region, like we might have found the area of in the last section, right? So they describe a region, we know what curves it's bounded by. Um, and then instead of finding the area, we take that region and we revolve it about some axis. Usually that axis is the x-axis or y-axis, but it could be any other line. Um, there are two basic methods to find the volume of a solid of revolution. Uh, we're going to look at them both today. One is called the disk method and one is called the shell method. So first, let's look at the disk method. Um, with the disk method, we, you know, we start out with our region. So here's what I mean when I say start out with our region. They'll say, consider the region bounded by some curve, y equals f of x. And maybe they give us some other bounds like x equals a and x equals b. And maybe they also tell us that it's bounded by the x-axis. Um, I'm being, you know, I'm kind of being generic and I'm, and I'm looking specifically at something that's bounded by the x-axis. But, you know, any region, right? And then they say... Now, don't, we, don't, we don't care about the area of this, but take this region and revolve it, say, about the x-axis. When we do that, now, we'll have this kind of almost horn shape, if you look, if I take it in this particular, you know, example, right, the way this graph looks. If I revolve this about the axis, we get kind of this horn shape, and we want to find the volume of that solid. So the way that we find the volume of that solid is really the same way we find, um, we start out the same way as though we would find the area, which is, let's take a sample rectangle. And it's a rectangle that we would use to find the area. Right, so this rectangle has a delta x width. And if I revolve it, if I revolve just this rectangle about the x-axis, I get this disk shape here. Now, take this disk out, just grab it, pull it out, and then I flipped it over. So it's lying on its side. And uh, really the only reason I did that is because it makes it easier anyway for me to see that this is really just a, a narrow, like kind of a thin cylinder, right? Um, so the delta x would be very small, right? So it's not a very tall cylinder, but it is a cylinder. And my point is that we know how to find the volume of a cylinder, right? The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. And as you look through the uh, text and um, in the theorems or, or in the formulas given in this uh, section, there's a bunch of integral formulas. But if you're using the disk method, the only formula you really need to know, and it's the one that I think is the most useful, is that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Because if I remember that, then because I have always making sure that I'm always starting from a sketch, and I know what this disk looks like and, and where it came from in the sketch, in the region. All I have to do is be able to tie the radius and height as they appear in, these, in this formula to um, the sketch itself. What does this have to do with the function and the region? So um, the radius of this cylinder is actually equal to the length of the rectangle. And in this case, the way this was drawn, that's just the function y, or f of x. And the height of the cylinder is delta x. It's the width of the rectangle. So for the disk method, delta x is always your height. Um, that'll change when we look at the shell method. But for the disk method, delta x is your height. So this becomes pi times f of x squared delta x. So there's the volume of just a sample disk. And then um, what we're gonna do is, you know, just like with the area, if you could find the volume of a sample disk, then the integral pretty much writes itself. The volume is given by, now one thing I like to do is just grab constant factors and bring them out. So I always write the pi, the factor of pi outside. We're integrating f of x squared and then delta x turns into dx. And in this case, our limits of integration come from the region. Again, they're, the limits of integration for the volume are always the same as the boundaries, the limits of integration that you would use if you were finding the area of that region. So we're integrating from A to B. More generally, 
Um, here I have the, the function f of x. More generally, it's, you know, we're integrating from some, you know, limits a to b, and then I would call this, say, r of x squared dx, where r of x is just whatever the radius is. So maybe your region isn't bounded also by the x-axis, but you just figure out what is my radius as a function of x, and you're using pi r squared h to set this up. Um, and uh, so that's sort of stated down here, right? So that's what the formulas that I have down here. Um, we can also revolve a region about the y-axis or some vertical axis. And when we do this, we have to draw horizontal rectangles. So note that here I had a vertical rectangle and I was revolving it about a horizontal axis, the x-axis, and that's what gave me this disk shape. In this next scenario, maybe my region looks like this. Say from C to D, and I'm revolving about the y-axis. This region, if I were to find the area of this region, I think I'd probably use horizontal rectangles, right? That would be the easiest. But when we're revolving it about this vertical axis, if we're going to get a disk, we basically have to use a horizontal rectangle. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But first, just, just consider us drawing this horizontal rectangle that has a delta y width. And this length here is just the function, is whatever the x-coordinate is, say x equals g of y. Um, then for our sample disk, again, the only formula I really need is pi r squared h. If, if it's a disk, that means it's a cylinder, and I'm using pi r squared h. In this case, this disk, if I were to draw it out, you know, if I revolve this rectangle about this axis, it looks like this, right? So there it is, that disk. It looks very much like a flat cylinder. I drew it a little lopsided, but um, just, you know, use your imagination a little bit, I guess, try to visualize maybe what it would look like if I were better at drawing. And um, the radius, in this case, is given by the function g of y. And the height is delta y. So there's our delta v, which means that our volume is given by pi times the integral. Again, I, I pull out constant factors of g of y squared dy. And our limits, again, come from these fat physical boundaries. How high up could I push that rectangle? How far down could I slide that rectangle? So we're integrating from c to d. Um, and then again, this region happened to be, you know, bounded by the y-axis, so when we did g of y minus zero, right minus left, we were just subtracting zero. But just more generically, um, it's just r of y, whatever that radius is as a function of y, radius squared dy times pi. And that's what this says here, right? That's just what these two formulas say. Um, it's really important to note that in order to end up with a disk shape, the rectangle that we drew had to be perpendicular to the axis of revolution. If I had a vertical rectangle, I revolve about a vertical axis, it wouldn't be a disk shape. It would, in fact, and we're going to look at this in a little bit, it would give us this hollow shell, right? Um, but to have a disk, to have a solid disk, you have to have a rectangle that is perpendicular to the axis, and for that disk to be solid without like a hole punched in the middle, the rectangle actually has to be abutting uh, the axis. So like in this drawing right here that we're looking at, note that the region comes right up against the axis of revolution. Um, and that means that the disk that we have won't have a hole punched in it. Um, it's possible to still use the disk method. We call it, it's like a modified disk method. We call it a washer method. But you can still modify the disk method even if your region isn't pushed right up against um, the boundary, the axis of revolution. Um, so again, this is just what I said uh, a few seconds ago, but 
it, this is really crucial. If you're using this, the sample rectangle is drawn perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And one takeaway from this observation is that if they tell, they'll always tell you the region, they'll always in a problem tell you what axis you're revolving it around. So if they also tell you what method to use, if they're telling you to use disks, then you really don't need to think about which way to draw the rectangle. Um, you know you have to draw with the rectangle in whatever way makes it perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So in example 612, we're use, gonna use the disk method. It says find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by, okay, our curves are y equals x squared, that's the curve they've shown us, x equals two, that's this vertical line here, uh, and y equals zero. So I guess this is the region we're interested in. About the x-axis, okay. So that means we're revolving it about this axis here. I could think about whether I think it's more convenient to use vertical or horizontal rectangles if I were like thinking of this as an area problem, but they told me I'm revolving about the x-axis. That's horizontal. And so my rectangles have to be perpendicular to that. I must, I have no choice. I have to draw a vertical rectangle if I'm gonna get a disc. So I draw a vertical rectangle. There's my delta x uh, width. If I were to revolve this rectangle about the axis, I could see that I will get this disc shape. And the radius of the disc is the length of that rectangle. And that's a vertical length, so that's top minus bottom. In this case, that is going to be the x squared curve minus zero. So this length is x squared. And that is also our radius. Our volume of the sample disk, I'm not even going to look up uh, a ver uh, an integral formula. I'm just going to remember um, that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Now, when you take your, your test on this, you know, you can make a note card. You could put the integral formulas on. You could put just pi r squared h on. Whatever you find most helpful, I want you to do that. Um, but I do think that there is uh, something to be gained by just thinking about it in simple, as simple geometric terms as possible. So um, I just remember pi r squared h, and then I just try to remember how, do, how is the radius connected to this sample disk? What is the radius of the sample disk? What is the height of the sample disk? Um, the radius is x squared, so we're going to square x squared. The height is always your delta, your width, so in this case delta x. So our delta v is pi times x to the fourth delta x. Now we're going to use this to uh, make our integral. I'm going to pull the pi outside. We're integrating x to the fourth dx, and our limits are just how far to the left and how far to the right. They're the limits, boundaries of the original region, and um, they start at x equals zero here, and they go up to x equals two. So now we can evaluate this integral. So one fifth x to the fifth from zero to two. I'm gonna pull out this one fifth here. So we have pi over five times, and then evaluating this, we get two to the fifth minus zero to the fifth. Two to the fifth is 32. So our volume here is 32 pi over five. You can approximate that on, on the calculator if you wish, but I'd just as soon leave it uh, uh, exact, so that's what you'll you'll observe me doing more often than not. Okay, let's try another. We're going to use the disk method here to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equals two x. 
that's the line they drew us here. Y equals 6, that's this line up here, this horizontal line, and X equals 0, which is the X axis. So we're looking at this triangle region right here, and we're going to revolve it about the Y axis. So I'm revolving at about a vertical axis. If I'm going to end up with disks, I had better use a horizontal rectangle. That's really important to observe here because look, if we were finding the area of this region, horizontal rectangle would work, so would vertical rectangle. I mean, if you try them each, right, you'll be able to set up an integral that will give you that area just fine. Um, but we, if we're using the disk method, we have no choice but to use a horizontal rectangle. So there's my rectangle. It's horizontal, which means it has a delta y width. Um, the length here, which is the same as the radius of the disks that of the disk that we end up with, is just the same as the x coordinate of the line, right? Because the the left boundary is zero. So that's 2x. Uh, no, sorry, that's uh, y is equal to, to 2x. The radius itself is the x coordinate, which is just x. And so I want to know what is that in terms of y. This is we're going to get a delta y uh, volume of the sample disk, which means we're going to have a dy integral. Um, so in terms of y, just using this equation, x is one half y. So there's our radius. Delta V, that's pi r squared h. The radius is 1 half y. The height for the disk method is always your delta. So for us, delta y. Simplifying, we have 1 quarter y squared. So our delta V is pi over 4 times y squared delta y. Um, we're going to use this to set up the integral. I'm going to pull the constant outside, so pi over 4 times the integral of y squared dy. And our limits um, come from the limits of the region. So uh, and they're y limits. We're integrating with respect to y. So we're going to start at y equals 0, go up to y equals 6. I think the hard part is done at this point. Now we're going to do the integration. So pi over 4 times. If we integrate y squared, we get 1 third y cubed. We're going integrating from 0 to 6. I'm going to uh, pull out this factor of 1 third. So I got pi over 12 times. And then we're evaluating y cubed from 0 to 6. So we have uh, 6 cubed minus 0 cubed. And then we can actually reduce. You could use a calculator if you like, but um, there's an opportunity to reduce here. So 12 is 2 times 6, and we have 6 cubed, which is 6 times 6 times 6 is 2 times 3. And I'm writing it that way because that's going to make the canceling easier. So we're left with 6 times 3, which is 18, 18 pi for our volume. Like area, uh, when you find a volume, the volume is always positive. If you get a negative result when you're finding the volume of a solid revolution, that means that there is an error somewhere in your work and you should find it. Okay, um, so now we're going to spend some time. The other technique that we have for finding the volume of a solid of revolution is to use the shell method. So consider this figure here, right? Consider on the left, right? I've got a region um, bounded by this curve, like y equals f of x. And I'm looking at it between x equals a and x equals b. Um, 
and I'm going to revolve it now about the um, x, uh, sorry, about the y axis. So if I were to draw a vertical rectangle, which has a, a delta x width, um, if I take this vertical rectangle now and I revolve it about this, uh, about the y axis, I don't get a disk anymore. In fact, what I get is a mostly hollow, thin shell, which I've done my best to draw over here on the right. Um, so the rectangle that I drew here is this rectangle right here. That rectangle, the width of the rectangle is the thickness of this shell. So that has a delta x thickness. The height of the shell, now remember in the disk method, height was always just our delta x or delta y. So that's no longer the case here. With the shell method, the height of the shell is the length of the rectangle. And the radius is the distance from the axis. Now radius always means distance from axis, but in the disk method, the distance from the axis happened to be equal to the length of that rectangle. Um, for us, uh, the, the radius, the distance uh, from the axis out to the rectangle. In this case, the way I've drawn it, because uh, we were revolving about the x-axis, I imagine that I've drawn this rectangle at some arbitrary x-coordinate x, and so whatever that x-coordinate is the radius. So the radius, in a lot of these problems, the radius is x, or the radius is y, if we happen to be drawing vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal rectangles. Okay. So from this point, if we, if we understand what the shell looks like, then our goal is to figure out what is the volume of this sample shell. So what you need to try to... Um, um, visualize at this point is that this shell, if I could imagine taking this shell and cutting it up the side, um, what I would be looking at is a really thin um, box. So um, let me see if I can't uh, get this on camera. Alright, so if you can imagine taking this shell and, you know, here's my shell, right, if I can and it's mostly hollow, right? Um, I could kind of cut it up the side and unroll it. All right, now I can see that what I have is really a thin box. And um, I know how to find the volume of a box. It's length times width times height. So um, one of the dimensions of the box is just the height of the rectangle, the height of the shell itself, which is the height of the rectangle. Um, the other dimension is the... Um, is like the thickness, right? So it's really thin. That thickness of the shell comes from the delta x um, or delta y, depending on the kind of rectangle we had to draw. And then the third dimension, right? This dimension across comes from uh, the circumference of the shell. And so the circumference is two pi r, two pi times the radius. So when we're finding the volume of the shell, now we're just finding the volume of this, uh, this sort of very thin box, the dimensions of this box, the length, the width, and the height. Um, two of the dimensions come from the height, which is the length of the um, rectangle, and that was just the, um, in this case, the function f of x. And uh, the other, the length, came from the circumference of that, uh, of the circle, so that was 2 pi r. And then uh, the other dimension that really, it, it's a really thin box, but it was just the thickness of this shell, and that's delta x. So 2 pi r, um, and, and I guess the way I always think of it is just finding 2 pi r h times delta x. Um, uh, this is often the case it, h ends up being equal to the function that you're working with, but not always. So I think of this as just 2 pi r h and then times the thickness. Um, this is the one formula I remember um, when it comes to using the shell method. You'll see uh, integral formulas in the text and in these notes. But if I can 
tie, um, if I know how 2 pi r h, if I know how the radius and the height are related to the shell that I'm drawing and related to the region that we sketched and the rectangle that we draw, um, then, then it, it's not too difficult to set up the integral that we need. So um, I want to start actually, um, before we do the, uh, an example, um, I'll just point out that the big difference in the disk method and the shell method is that with the disk method you'll remember that our rectangles had to be drawn perpendicular to the axis of revolution. Uh, to end up with shells, your rectangle has to be parallel to the axis of revolution. So again, you know, if they're asking you to find a volume and they tell you what technique, whether to use disks or shells, you don't have to guess about what kind of rectangles to draw. Um, the time that you need to, um, you know, give that a little bit more thought is if they don't tell you what technique to use, they just say find the volume and then it's up to you to kind of decide which uh, which way is likely to be the most successful or the easiest. Um, we're going to do a couple of examples here. So in 614, we're going to use the shell method to find the volume of a solid generated by revolving the first quadrant region bounded by y equals 4 minus x squared. So there's that first quadrant region of that curve. x equals 0, that's the y-axis y equals 0, that's the x-axis, about the y-axis. So we have a vertical axis of revolution, which means that we need to draw a vertical rectangle if we're going to end up with shells. That vertical rectangle has a delta x width, so our shell will have a delta x thickness. The height of the shell is the height of the rectangle. So in this case, that's top minus bottom. The bottom is 0, though, so the height is 4 minus x squared. And the radius. So I drew this rectangle just at an arbitrary x-coordinate. Whatever x-coordinate I draw this rectangle at, that's going to be the radius. So the radius is simply x. And the radius of the shell changes depending on where the um, depending on, you know, where I grab that rectangle from. So if we look at our sample shell, our volume is going to be 2 pi r h times the thickness of the shell. So 2 pi, the radius is x, the height is 4 minus x squared, and I'm going to, um, I think I'll distribute that x there, so I have 2 pi times 4x minus x cubed. And then I left off the thickness here, so that's delta x, delta x. Okay, there's the volume of the sample shell. Now we're ready to set up the integral. Our volume, I'm going to pull the 2 pi outside. Integral of 4x minus x cubed dx. And the limits of the integral are the limits of the region. So that's going to be from 0 to 2. Right, those are our limits here. How far to the left and how far to the right. I could slide that rectangle. Um, now that we have the integral set up, uh, that's really, I think, the, the hardest part of these problems. So let's integrate uh, using, these are polynomials, uh, so it's just a power rule that we need to use. No u substitutions are needed. Um, integrate 4x, we get 2x squared minus, and then x cubed, that'll be 1 quarter x to the fourth, integrating from 0 to 2. Um, if we plug in the upper limit first, and then the lower limit, 
course when you plug in zero this will give you zero uh, let's see so 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 2 to the fourth is 16 divided by 4 is 4 so 4 times 2 pi is 8 pi here's our volume Um, we're going to do one more, and um, I want to take an opportunity to just consider a problem where um, we're not revolving about the x-axis or the y-axis, right? So we have a different axis of revolution. And when you change an axis of revolution, um, that's going to just make us pause and think a little bit harder about what the radius is. Because remember, a radius always means distance from the axis. We're looking at the same region that they defined in the last problem. So it was this first quadrant region. It says this time we're going to revolve about the line x equals 2. We're using the shell method, so we've got to use vertical rectangles because it's still a vertical axis of revolution. Um, the height, that doesn't change the height of the rectangle, right? I mean it's still the same function, um, so the height is this function which was 4 minus x squared. It's the same function given in the last example. So what does change if we change up the axis of revolution, what changes is the radius. The radius is always distance from, uh, from the axis to the rectangle, so, um, and this is a horizontal distance, so our radius is right minus left, and in this case that is going to be 2 minus x. So the right, you know, we're revolving about the line x equals 2. The, the right boundary is always 2. And the left um, boundary is x. I'm still imagining that I've drawn this rectangle at some arbitrary x coordinate. So whatever x coordinate I draw it at, that radius is going to be 2 minus x. Now let's set up our the volume of our sample shell. 2 pi r h times thickness. So that is 2 pi times and then 2 minus x is radius. The height is 4 minus x squared. The thickness is delta x still. And I'm gonna um, I think just expand out that product, foil it out. You get 8 minus 4x minus 2x squared plus x cubed. The region is the same, which means that the limits of integration that we found are the same. If the region's the same, the boundaries are the same. So um, what's changed is the radius, which has, a, which has affected um, the function that we're going to integrate. So setting up our integral now, pulling out the factor of 2 pi, 2 pi times the integral of 8 minus 4x minus 2x squared plus x cubed with respect to x. We're integrating from 0 to 2. So we get 8x minus 2x squared minus two-thirds x cubed plus one-quarter x to the fourth from zero to two. Let's plug in our limits. If I plug in zero, let's just notice, right, every term has a factor of x. When I plug in 0, 
those terms will all zero out, so we get zero. So I will uh, refrain from plugging in every term there. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the calculator. So we have 8 times 2 minus 2 times 2 squared minus 2 thirds times 2 cubed plus 1 quarter times 2 to the fourth. And we get 20 thirds. or 40 pi over 3 for the volume. Alright, so some keen observers might have noticed that we got a different volume here. We took, we started with the same region, but we changed the axis of revolution, which will change the volume. Um, you know, if, if I look at the region here, just think about what happens if I take a region and I revolve it about an axis to get a volume. The further away from the axis some part of the region is, the more volume it contributes. So if I have like the bigger part of the function, um, if I have like the bigger part of the function, and by which I mean like this part here, right, that's pretty big, like, like area-wise, is further away from the axis, that's going to contribute more volume overall. Compare that to uh, when we revolve this about the y-axis, the bigger part of the region, right, was very close to the axis, was in fact right up abutting the axis. Um, and so that's going to contribute less volume overall. The further away uh, the bulk of the region is from the axis, the bigger that volume is that it creates. So we maybe aren't very surprised that we got um, a different volume and that we got a volume that was quite a bit larger.